Forced air composting, is it worth the effort? Today we're going to get an update on my system and you can learn about how this is evolving and if it might be right for you. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm your host Diego, D-I-E-G-O, and I want to update you on the forced air composting system that I designed. A few weeks ago I put in place a system that would forcefully inject air into compostable materials to try and speed up and make the composting process more efficient. If you missed that video, a link is popping up right here or here, and you can check that video out. We have two piles here. I'll call them piles, but they're in barrels. We have the forced air pile, and then we have a control pile. In the passively aerated pile, the only air access is via the top, and through a center air hole that I put in place when I built the pile. It mimics this big Johnson Sioux bioreactor. So far, this pile I think has broken down quite a bit. It started totally full, and now the level is about down to here. So we've had six inches of settling over time. It feels like it's gelled together. Why is it gelling together and why is that even important? Well, the reason it's gelling together is because fungal hyphae are tying this whole thing together and essentially all these loose pieces are slowly becoming one piece as they're bound together by the fungal hyphae that are breaking down the wood material in here. If you remember, this is wood chips and some garden waste, more wood chips than garden waste that's in here. So there's gonna be a lot of fungal decomposition within the pile. Putting my hand down inside the passive pile, I don't feel any heat whatsoever. If we go over to the aerated pile, that started full as well, the barrel, and now we're about down to here. It hasn't settled as much. One question I would have is, well, is the air tubing structure actually holding up the material? Is it preventing it from settling? Possibly, but it really hasn't settled as much. I'm gonna try and push on it and see if I could push it down more. I probably could compact it if I needed to. I don't want to because I don't want to undo some of the air channels that are forming in here. One thing I have not done is dug into these piles or measured any sort of temperatures. So let's start out and actually measure a temperature on both these piles and see where they're at after a few weeks. Now, in theory here, the temperatures should be about the same. They're fungally dominated composting at this point. That's typically a lot cooler than a bacterial dominated compost. So I'm not expecting any sort of high temperatures. If I'm guessing temperatures are probably somewhere in the 70 to 80 degree range, I'm doing this in the morning and it says right here, ambient air temperature is 63 degrees. I wanted to do this in the morning when it was cool. So any heat that was in the pile would be the result of microbial activity within the pile and not as though the sun was baking on it and artificially heating it up. So first let's check this pile. After checking the passive pile in a few different locations, it came in at 79 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we'll check the other pile. The forced air pile came in at 88 degrees after measuring in several locations, significantly warmer than this pile. I mean, a 10 degree difference at these temperatures I think is significant and I think it's a lot. Why is that? Maybe the bacteria, maybe the fungi, they're just more efficient in here. That's, that's generating more heat. Maybe we're getting some anaerobic conditions in here right now, anaerobic Bacteria tend to operate at lower temperatures and they're not generating heat, so maybe that's what's happening here. It's hard to say, but it is interesting that measuring just at the surface of both these piles, I'm not digging down into them, that this one is substantially warmer than this one. How much water are each pile getting? Well, they're all getting about the same amount of water. What I do is kind of gauge by feeling the surface, how wet or dry does it feel based on the temperature each day. And then probably every two to four days, I'm watering these piles manually. Each pile gets about 30 seconds. I count it out. So they are getting the same amount of water. One initial concern of the forced air pile when I was building it, and Dr. David Johnson, creator of this bioreactor right here, expressed this concern was the forced air might want to dry this pile out. And I haven't had that experience at all. There isn't enough air pressure going through the pile to evaporate all that air. You know, think of a hair dryer, you put that in front of your face, you get a huge blast of wind. This is much more subtle. This is more like a type air flowing through the pile. So it's just providing enough oxygen for the microbes, but not so much that 
bits of leaves and stuff are flying up out of here along with water vapor. One other thing I'm gonna do as part of the update is I want to dig into the pile a little bit. I haven't dug into either one of these yet, and I wanna do it carefully. I don't wanna screw anything up. I don't wanna break up too many hyphae strands, and we're gonna have a look and see what does it look like. So in the passive pile, digging down, this is what we're getting. And I don't know if this is showing up by this thumb right here. There's a bit of mycelium forming that is breaking down this wood. Holding this in my hand, it feels cool. It's not hot. I mean, at 80 degrees, it shouldn't feel hot. And it does look dark. It looks different than when it ends. So breakdown is happening. Pulling deeper out of the pile. You kind of get the same thing. Darker color, what you'd expect in a composting process. I'm not going to screw that one up. So leave that there. Now, if we dig into the surface of the forest there a little bit, smells a little bit musty kind of moldy. What did this other one smell like? Not really a smell. Maybe this smells a little bit musty from my unscientific nose. This is what the forest air looks like. So not a huge difference. I'm not really seeing fungal hyphae forming in this pile. Now that doesn't mean they're not there. It just means I might not be seeing them. Getting down into this pile, one thing I am noting is that it's very wet. So I'm probably actually watering too much, watering every few days, and the idea of needing some sort of daily dripper on here isn't really required unless that dripper is just drip, drip, dripping water on versus adding a ton of water. So at the end of the story, which one's doing better? Is there a difference? And I would say, I don't know if either one of these are better than the other. There's definitely one that is hotter than the other. Is that better? Is that worse? I don't know. We're going to have to see how this plays out. This is really a long game and people want to see updates on these things. I realize that. But this is a month by month by month process and we're probably not going to be seeing significant results out of either one of these barrels until Thanksgiving or November of 2020. So we still have a long ways to go. Nonetheless, this was your update. I think it's a worthwhile experiment. I think a lot of people have found this interesting. Would I do this all the time in terms of forcing air? No, but I think it is something worth trying. If you have difficulty with composting, why not add some tubing to it and either let that tubing passively aerate the pile or actively aerate the pile by forcing air through that tubing. So give it a try. Thanks for watching this one. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.